Hi, I'm Brian Creature doing high school biology. Today's topic, reptiles, the next evolutionary step up from amphibians. Alright, first some general characteristics. All reptiles have this dry, scaly skin. You've probably seen this when it comes to, oh, say, snakes or maybe lizards. They'll also lay terrestrial eggs. The word here is amniotic, amniotic eggs. This basically means that you can lay them on land and they won't dry out. Eggs from amphibians and anything before that would dry out if you lay them on land, so they were all kept in the water. Reptiles also have more highly developed lungs. Now this makes a lot of sense, because amphibians, they spent more time in the water and they could respire through their skin. Reptiles cannot respire through their skin, so they'll have a greater surface area in their lungs for exchange of gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide. Alright, last up, reptiles are ectotherms. This is basically cold-blooded. It means that they don't regulate their body temperature through internal processes, but rather through behavior, like laying in the sunlight or moving around to increase body temperature or laying still or in the shade to cool down. Alright, now let's look at the circulatory system. It's still a closed circulatory system. Blood doesn't leave it, it's still double loop. One loop through the lungs, the other loop through the body. But there have been some changes in the heart. Alright, it's still three chain. You have a right atrium, a left atrium, and a ventricle. But see right here, we're getting part of a divide. Why is this important? Well, eventually the heart will develop to become four chambered where oxygen-rich blood is in one part and oxygen-poor blood is in the other. We're going to see that in humans. For now, both those types of blood will mingle in the ventricle. Let's take a look at how this works. Alright, so oxygen-poor blood will come in from the body. It'll enter in the right atrium and then enter the ventricle from there. The ventricle will then pump it out and it'll go through the lungs, becoming oxygen-rich blood. It then re-enters the heart through the left atrium, comes into the ventricle, and is pumped back out through the body. Oxygen is depleted, comes back into the right atrium, over again. Again, two loops, one through the body, one through the lungs. Alright, and now for the different groups of reptiles. First up, lizards and snakes. You probably know about these lizards, legs, clawed toes, ears. Snakes, no legs. They, well, they're snakes. They're long. Alright, also crocodilians. This includes things like crocodiles, alligators, caimans. You know what they look like in simple enough. Turtles and tortoises. Alright, the major distinction here is between turtles and tortoises. Turtles live on land, tortoises live on the water. These are recognized for their carapace and their plastron. You may have noticed that turtles and tortoises have this shell. Well, the top part, which actually grows out of the creature's spine, is the carapace. The bottom part is the plastron. Last up, tuatara. Very few species in this group, most of them are extinct. These have large ears and very primitive scales. The only place you can find these few islands off the coast of New Zealand. Alright, and that's pretty much it for reptiles. To recap, reptiles have dry, scaly skin, lay amniotic eggs, that means they're terrestrial, don't dry out. They have more developed lungs, greater surface area for exchange of gases, and they're also ectothermic, meaning that they regulate their body temperature through behavior as opposed to internal processes. Reptiles have a dual loop circulatory system, one loop through the body, one through the lungs, and also it's closed, meaning blood never leaves it. If we look at the heart, we see that a divide is starting to form in the ventricle, getting ready to become four-chambered in later evolutions. Alright, the groups of reptiles, lizards and snakes, crocodilians, turtles and tortoises, here's a distinction, turtles go into land, tortoises live in the water, the carapace is the shell on top, the plastron is the cell, shell on the bottom. Alright, and last up, tuatara. These have large ears, primitive scales, they're not too common these days, you can only find them in a few islands off the coast of New Zealand. Alright, that's all for now. Again, I'm Brian Creer. See you next time.